so much for joining me. Thanks so much for having me. Good to see you again. So I, I spoke to you almost a year ago. I spoke to you July of 2019. And My of goodness. course, tell us all about your life as a professional hacker. But many of my audience, I have a, a whole bunch of new listeners now, so they have no idea who are you, why do you hack computers, how do you get started? So I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about you. How do you get into this business of computer hacking? Sure. Uh, okay, well, I've always been passionate about computers since the age of 10. And um, back in 2001, I, I started working for a very, very large software company at the time called Novell. Uh, which was the compared to Microsoft at the time. And uh, I started getting inspired by watching shows like CSI and 24. I'm like, how does Chloe O'Brien break in all these computer systems so fast? And then I, that's when I found out there was actually a course called the Certified Ethical Hacker, where they teach you the same techniques that the bad guys use to break into systems, except for using those skills for good. And um, so I, I pleaded with my boss to send me to uh, for this course. And uh, they, they sent me to Washington, where I got to train with the FBI, the CIA, and the Navy SEALs that were in my class. So we got to share a lot of wealth of information. And I felt that now that I know how these hackers are getting in, I felt it was my duty to share this knowledge with the community and, and the general public on how to keep safe. So that's what I've been doing ever since. So I teach um, uh, online. Uh, to the parents, the kids, how to avoid cyber predators, uh, how, do, how do people get tracked, scams. Um, so I do a lot of stuff. I do a lot of video content online. So right now I have a, a training program called Internet Safety University, which ha now has over 26,300 students in it wow. from 160-something countries. I didn't even know there was that many countries, to be honest. And um, for years, people have been telling me, oh, you got to write a book. I'm like, and I really did not want to do this because why am I going to write a book uh, that's going to take, you know, six to 12 months to do? And by the time it hits the shelves, it's going to be obsolete. When I can just do video content, they, they absorb it right away. It's done. So, uh, but, uh, but I was convinced to do it. And uh, my, uh, my book just arrived a couple of weeks ago. So the, the, actual, the official launch date of it will be uh, May 1st. Okay, great. Okay, so... Uh, first of all, let me go back a little bit on your story. So you got interested in, in hacking computers. You thought it was cool. You saw it in TV. Uh, can you tell us about, I don't know, one event, one hacking uh, event that is remarkable for us listeners to know about? And secondly, how long have you been hacking computers or being paid to hack computers? Yeah, so I've been doing the hack. The eth it's called ethical hacking since 2005. So there's... Let me just clarify something around hacking computers. People think that, you know, I, I get some calls sometimes. Yeah, can you hack my friend's Facebook? Can you hack my my company? Uh, I'm like, no. You know, we get hired to legally hack these companies. Like, they, they hire us. They have contracts in place that says, I authorize Terry Cutler to hack me. So this way, if the police show up at my door and say, look, I got a, I got a form, right? It's called my get-out-of-jail-free card. Right. And... I um, didn't you hack one bank one time? It was uh, it was a uh, well. There's been a couple of companies, uh, not necessarily a bank, but there was one company. It was um, it was in the like can we say the, can we say the distribution? Anyway, the company hired me to hack it from the outside, and I couldn't do it. So I I said screw it, I'm going over there. So I dressed casually. And drove over to their office, walked up to the receptionist, and I said, I feel really bad. May I please use your bathroom? And But the bathroom was behind the counter, which means she would have had to buzz me in. And luckily, she said, make it quick. Because I said, you know, we're driving. I, I got the kids in the car. We drank so much water. They're screaming. And, and my please use your washroom. So she said, make it quick. And when I was in there, I left two USB keys in, in the stalls. And after two hours, a curious employee found us. Oh, what's this? And plugged it in. And that's what allowed me into the back door through the system. Wow. Okay. So that's interesting. Okay. So you you have been putting your content in videos. Uh, you're very popular. Why write a book? You just said it a minute ago. By the time the book is printed, uh, some of the information will be obsolete. So why why what drove you to write a book? Um. Well, okay, so my, my official book's been in, in the works for seven years. And what happened was, because as you know, like when I, when I do my, my 
audio content or sorry, my video content, I script a lot of my stuff. I I put out what I'm going to say, how I'm going to say it, and then I I, I, I store it. So I had about 80,000 words of content just sitting there. And there's ways to repurpose that into a book. But the problem that I had with the book was that the way I speak on video is not the same as what's in a book. So the whole thing had to be kind of rewritten and remassaged for a reader. Um, and also there's, a, there's, a, there's another feeling when you have an official author stamp on your name. So that's that was one of the reasons why I, I wanted it as well. But isn't security uh, evolving all the time? For example, I have a website and practically once a month I get um, uh, security updates, okay, yeah. in my website. So whatever was popular two months ago, now my, my website, I feel that is secure, at least to the latest of my uh, provider, internet provider, website provider, etc., so the information that you're putting right there today in print, wouldn't it be obsolete by the time the reader reads it? So that's a very good question. So there's actually some content that's actually in this book that is still valuable today as it was 10 years ago. Okay. We call it, we call it our baseline. So things like how to create uh, an unbeatable password, how to, how to turn on the two-step verification, those things are so important that most people still don't even know how to do that today. So that stuff will never die. So that definitely had to make it into the book. I talked about the latest COVID scams in there. Um, so a lot of the content that I've done that's still valuable as it was years ago and still valid today are in this book. So it's kind of like a distilled version of, an, of, 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 my, of my work, basically. Okay, and you just mentioned you put the latest about the COVID scan. Uh, in your book, uh, what? How can we protect ourselves? I mean, I'm, I already have gotten a few emails that get you COVID refund here. Click here. Uh, of course, I know better. I've been in computer for a long time. But but uh, an average listener, how can they protect themselves from against this kind of scams? And, and that's the whole point of this book, and also the videos, is around awareness. And the problem that we're seeing right now is that nobody cares about cybersecurity until it's too late. And they're 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 not even and the, the the new scams right now are so well done that they don't even know that they're part of a scam. So like the COVID stuff, you receive a text message saying that uh, hey, please donate to the Red Cross, and there's a link that looks like it's the Red Cross, but it's not, and now you're giving away your credit card data. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of scams that if you don't realize what's going on, uh, you're you're gonna get you're gonna get hit. And there is some there is some indications in an email or in a text to know if it is a scam. Things like, is the sender address something you recognize? Is there a sense of urgency in the body of the message? Those are all triggers that would tell somebody, hey, you know what, uh, maybe you should think twice before interacting with this email. Okay, so let's say I just received a email from the Red Cross or so-called Red Cross and they are asking me for, I don't know, a $20 donation. And of course, since I'm a generous person, I said, hell, you know, people are suffering. They put me a sad face or someone is starving or something. So I decide to give them 20 bucks. What happens then? Well, the, the, the money's going to go right into the scammer's account. I see. So it goes right into their account. And usually they're, they're hidden behind virtual private networks or their websites are, unre- or, are not necessarily registered to the real person. So in order for you to f- get that $20 back, say you were really ambitious to get your money back, you want to find out who these people are. Well, it would probably cost you ten to $100,000 bucks in, in technicians, lawyers, uh, law enforcement to, to actually get this $20 back. So it's, oh. it's, it's very sophisticated. Okay, so you just mentioned the Red Cross. What are other scams that we could uh, uh, expect to have? For example, I got one from the government says, claim your, I don't know, your, your benefit, uh, Canada benefit something, what is it called? Uh, is that another scam going on? I have not gotten that one yet, but it wouldn't surprise me that it is circulating. Actually, the biggest scam that I'm getting right now, which actually resurfaced, is the, it's called the sextortion scam. It says, hey, Alain, you don't know me, but your password is this, and it's your real password. 
and people are freaking out like, oh my God, uh, how did this guy get my password? And the reason for that is because sites like LinkedIn, Marriott, uh, or my fitness pal, for example, they got hacked. And maybe you use the same password on those websites uh, as you do on the website you, you, just, you just found out about, and they were able to crack your password. And because your password was linked to an email address, they send it back to you saying, hey, LA, this is your password. And, and next, you know, they'll say, if you don't pay me in Bitcoin, I have video of you on, a, on, a, on an adult website that I'm going to send all your contacts. And <laughs> I will, I will pay that, them. I, I will pay them to post my video on, on that section. <laughs> uh, okay, so, no, uh, all kidding aside, um, a lot of people now are using Zoom as well to communicate and do, I don't know, their work, uh, their, yeah, their work things and uh, clubs and people are keeping in touch through Zoom. But also I heard that there are some security issues using a yes. Zoom account. What, yes. what are they? Okay, so ironically, I just had an had a interview with Global News this morning. So that'll be airing Monday morning. Uh, so there's a couple of things. So the biggest the biggest problem with Zoom is what's called Zoom bombing. It's where you've given out a link to your contacts and maybe they shared it or somebody else got a hold of it. So you're in the middle of doing your meeting and all these random guys start showing up and start causing mayhem on your meeting, right? So Zoom said, okay, well, you know, we're going to put a password on your meeting now. But the same issue happens if 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 there's some guy in your in your network that shares that link out with the password well he's gonna be able to jump back on right but there are some tricks we can do now where um we can have these one-time meeting uh links so the moment that the meeting ends the uh, the link will self-destruct and it won't be reused and you can also set up things like uh it's called a waiting room so before the host arrives everybody's in the waiting room and as the host you get to see who's there and you get to kick off whoever's not supposed to be there and then start your meeting. But then once everybody's in the meeting, you can actually lock the meeting so nobody else can join. Or if, there, or if there is somebody in the meeting there that, 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 that's acting inappropriately, you can go and mute his controls and he's muted for the whole meeting. Wow. Okay, great. Okay, so Terry, tell us some more about this book. Uh, you are a video guy. You like to talk. You are very expressive. You use your hands. Uh, do you actually sit down and I start typing all, all, all this information? How, how did that happen? No, I worked with a team. So I, I hired uh, Richard Tardif, right? He's the CEO of Smiling Eyes Press, who you know. He, uh, he's been my ghostwriter since 2008. So uh, we've, we've had a lot, a lot, a lot of content already pre-written. And... Um, we were finding other ways to repurpose the stuff. And one of the comments I was getting from my viewers was, Terry, I don't have time to watch your videos. I don't have time to read your, your blogs, whatever it is, right? I just wish I had some small version that I can absorb very quickly. And that's what this book is. It's, it's a kind of like a distilled version of my work. So you can get you started. And as you can see, like, so the name of the book is called The Insider Secrets to Internet Safety, Advice from a Professional Hacker. So the whole thing around this book is safety, 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 advice from a professional hacker. So it's how to, um, how to lock down your social media accounts, uh, how to lock down your digital world, um, and also looking forward, right, as, especially now during COVID, how to protect yourself while you're at home and online. Because now, now you're you're the perfect prime target for hackers now, because you're you're outside the wall of your corporate firewalls and your security. So now you're at home with your 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 consumer firewalls and 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 your basic security. So you're a prime target. So that's wow. what this book's about. Uh, and tell us about the process of actually working with Richard Tardif. You guys sat together, yeah. exchanged ideas, or exchanged emails. How, how does it work to work with a ghostwriter? So, okay, so, the, so, so there was Richard involved with this. There was also uh, another person who was, in, who was a, an editor. So oh. she was able to uh, go in there and, and rework a lot of the wording. So the way it works is... Um, we sit down, we plan out kind of the outline of the book, what we want to have. And there was some 
content that was supposed to be in the book that didn't make it to the book because it was easier to do on video. So I can sometimes reference the video in the book. Like, for example, like how to know if you've been hacked in four minutes. Now, it's very complex to do it on video. OK, I had to distill that into a uh, into a layman's term video. So already that was hard enough. Now imagine putting that into a book. It was just so confusing. It didn't make sense. I said, screw it. We're scrapping that out. And so we left we left other stuff. Um, so once the pr there's a lot of reading, so you, you prepare your book, you prepare the script and. Once once you think it's done, you reread it with Richard and his team and see if it makes sense. And then the editor will go in there. She edits the book. Then you're going to reread it again. And then it goes to manuscript. So that's your manuscript. And you can go to a, a, a sample print after that to see what the book would look like. And then uh, once you're satisfied with everything, it goes live. And I heard that you also have it on audio. Yes. So it's, so the, the audio is actually in the works right now. I and see. that's why there's, there's going to be a two week delay because the person who's narrating it, his name is uh, Khalil Griffith. So he actually, he's on, he's, uh, he's pretty famous on Audible. He's actually narrated uh, the uh, Donald Trump book, The Art of the Deal. So I hired him to come in and do my book. And um, when I told him, I said, look, my personality on camera is I want to be playful. I want to be informative and I, and I like to incorporate some humor into it to make it edutaining, right? So he had to make sure some of, that, some of my personality was in his voice as well. So he showed, he sent me a, an audio sample of, uh, of the first uh, chapter and uh, loved it right away. I'm like, you're hired. <laughs> wow, so he's got amazing. A, he's, got a, he's got a bit of a backlog right now, but uh, so mid-May is supposed to be ready. But it is available on paperback and Kindle, and then it will be available on Audible and iTunes. And how does it work? People pre-buy it now or they wait until May 1st to buy it? What's, what's the deal? So, so technically the book is available today. Okay, but the thing is, is that um, I, I, I'm, I'm trying a little test out where if everybody buys on May 1st, if there's enough people that buy, Amazon will see that there's interest in this one book and puts you on their Amazon bestseller list. Right. So, so that, that allows me to have a bit of bragging rights where I can take a screenshot of it, but there's no, there's no metal, there's no money, there's no nothing you get from this, right? It's just you're, you're on Amazon bestsellers list at this point in time. You know, right. Hopefully, okay, I stay there one. for weeks, but <laughs> well, uh, Terry, uh, congratulations. This is amazing. I'm sure it's going to be a success. I'm sure a lot of hackers are going to be upset at you. You are revealing their secrets and uh, they're going to have <laughs> to even get smarter. So, I, I don't know how they're going to deal with you and, and this book, but good luck. It's going to be another book after. Make sure we keep current. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining. Oh, is there um, uh, a website where people can follow your your work and, and and see? Yeah, follow the progress of the of the book. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So there's uh, there's the main website will be terrycutler.com. Uh, so I got to put the landing page up there for the book, but it, it, right now it's on uh, sciologylabs.com forward slash insider dash secrets dash book. So, but but terrycutler.com will be the best place. Okay, I'm going to put it in the show notes. Terry, thank you so much for joining us and keeping us up to date with how to keep ourselves secure on this time of the coronavirus and um, keeping our Facebook password protected, all that. So uh, I, I cannot wait until I read the book. So thank, thank you, you so much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Okay, goodbye. Okay, let me stop the recording.